Hi, this is Alex Coulomb of Agile and Immersive Design, and I'm very excited today to check out the Welcome to Lightfields app uh, released by Google in the Steam Store. And Lightfields are something I've been interested in for a while, but I've never gotten to experience one before, so it's really cool being in this experience and realizing just how three-dimensional this feels, despite the fact that this isn't um, by a strict definition 3D geometry. Uh, my understanding of light fields is basically, you know, you scan a room um, in a way that's a little bit similar to how a 360 camera would work, but you're capturing uh, the light fields actually, which allows for a certain level of movement. So you can see here that even though I'm trying to, you know, lean around and look down the hallway or around the corner, um, it keeps snapping me back to the center. And so, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Let's see what the, the tour has to say. Welcome to a guided tour of light fields. A photograph records the rays of light coming toward a single viewpoint. It's a wonderful record of the scene, but it's two-dimensional and doesn't let you change your point of view as you move your head back and forth. Yeah, that. A stereo photograph contains two views of the scene, one for each eye, which allows us to perceive depth. But it still doesn't let us shift our view as we move our head, and doing so might even make the scene distort oh, man, unnaturally. Oh weird. Like, super distorted. A light field uses an array of cameras to record yeah, all the rays of light coming into a volume of space, which allows us to display the correct perspective of the scene for any point of view looking through the volume. Keep looking forward and try moving your head back and forth to see things shift in the scene. This is a great little explanation. If we view a spherical light field from inside the volume, we can see properly rendered 3D views of the scene in every direction and they shift in perspective as we move left and right. I really like how this is presented, or up you know, and down. with the texture and the In this light field of the living version. room set at the LA YouTube space, we can also see shifting reflections the light field brings to life in the mirror to the right, and the metal drum on the mantle to the left. Oh wow, look at the reflection in the mirror. So take a moment to look around. That's awesome. Take note of the surrounding white circles, which can help you stay inside the light field volume, and get ready to explore a few interesting places using light fields. We'll start in the Whoa. front yard of the Mosaic Tile House in Venice, California. Wow. Over two decades, artists Sherry Pan and Gonzalo Duran sculpted and decorated their home with fragmented pottery from their kiln, found objects okay. such as Okay, and now instead of losing the texture, we, we fade to black. And bottles melted into That's too bad. slabs of glass. Losing the texture and getting the like white ambient occlusion model was pretty cool. They also embedded shards of broken mirror into the mosaic, <laughs> which shift the reflections as you move back and forth. Wow, yeah, in virtual reality, this feels absolutely real. Even the home's interior is covered in decorative tile, including the front living room, which serves as a gift shop. I only lose my sense of presence when I, when I lean too much. But, oh, look at the reflection on that countertop. It's like an incredible level of specularity. Moving to a very different style of home, <gasps> we're now in the entryway of the Gamble House in Pasadena, look California, light. often called America's Arts and Crafts Masterpiece. The entryway receives light from the front door's leaded glass design of a Japanese Detail black the pine, plant there. and the staircase to the left exemplifies the home's exquisite teak and mahogany yeah, joint. I can crouch. I can crouch down. The living room shows how architects Charles and Henry Green combined Western and Japanese design elements and achieved harmony through a unified design of the architecture, furnishings, and even the light fixtures. It's amazing how much, how much presence this adds. This light field in the dining room makes it easy to notice the luster of the finished wood and the tile inlay in the mantle over the fireplace. This is so much better than a 360 photo even a stereo one. This final Gamble House light field in the butler's kitchen shows sharp reflections in the white tile, <laughs> dull reflections in the I just want to get sinks, really close to them. And shiny reflections in the turn of the century tea set to the right. Moving to St. Stephen's Church in Granada Hills, huh. we're now looking up Beautiful. to Roger Derrick Carrere's Light of the World stained glass window, originally nice displayed at the effect. 1964 New York World's Fair. Wow, look at the sun. If you lean left and right within the light field volume, you can see the sun move behind the differently colored pieces of glass just as it would in Whoa. real life. Wow, the sun actually changes color as it's coming through the different panes of glass. Looking to the heavens in a different way, we're now in front of the Space Shuttle Discovery at the Smithsonian National Air and Space hey, Museum. Hey, look Steve how big that is. I, I have Chantilly such a good Virginia. sense of scale right now. It's the third of NASA's five shuttles and flew to space 39 times from 1984 to 2011 more missions than any other spacecraft. 
We got things far away. Discovery's body is covered in white quilted insulation blankets, and its underside and nose in black ceramic tiles, both necessary to protect the shuttle when re-entering Earth's atmosphere at up to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Discovery's main engines burned liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen drawn from a huge Four external field top oh, mounted like to the other audio. side of the That's orbit. A nice touch. With additional thrust from solid rocket boosters beside the tank, the vehicle hey. could reach orbit in That's a nice eight and a half minutes at over 17,000 miles per hour. Is that captured? No, that has Discovery's to be a Discovery's spacious cargo bay carried the Hubble Space Telescope and other large payloads to space. In front of us, the external airlock could be configured for docking with space stations or used by astronauts for spacewalks. This feels very Stanley Kubrick. Up and to the right is the Orbiter Boom Sensor System, an extension for the Canadarm Robotic Manipulator System, which would normally be cradled on the opposite side of the cargo bay. Let me out. Floating through the airlock takes us to Discovery's mid-deck, where its typical crew of seven would live, work, eat, and sleep. <laughs> To the right, that's cool. The crew Looking out through the little the porthole there is the airlock leading back to the cargo bay. The curved beam overhead is part of a crew escape system added to the fleet after the loss of Space Shuttle Challenger and its crew. The ladder leads to Discovery's flight deck. The commander sat to the left, the pilot sat oh. to the right, wow. and two more astronauts could ride behind them. So much while detail. Others seated in the mid deck. That is incredible. The commander and pilot each had a joystick the text. why the ship is a glider. Every one of these little Earth. buttons and knobs and controller for bars are super Behind detailed. Behind the aft flight deck control station, with controls for performing docking maneuvers and manipulating the Canadarm, and windows to see into the cargo bay and above the ship. <laughs> That's weird. I wonder what that is. The Smithsonian Air and Space Museum staff was not only gracious enough to provide access to the inside of this priceless national treasure, but to pose for a group photo below the entry hatch, Whoa, next to where the Canadarm is displayed. <laughs> a little creepy. To record this light field, but they held still cool. for 30 seconds, keeping their eyes on the center of the light field rig as the cameras rotated around. Bullet time in the Matrix. If you lean back and forth, you may be able to notice that you can move into and out of each person's line of sight. You guys did a good job holding still. Well done. Back at the okay. Mosaic Tile House, Sherry Pan and Gonzalo wow. Duran also posed for a few light field portraits. In this light field at sunset, Sherry and Gonzalo fixed their gaze. Fascinating. We really don't have uh, an uncanny valley Leaning problem the left, here. You can see the sun like disappear people. behind the bush. You might also people. catch Gonzalo oh, he's smiling. smile. He's totally smiling as you lean. In this light field on the front porch, Sherry and Gonzalo followed the camera array with their eyes as it went huh. around producing Your the eyes effect of them looking me. toward you rather than through you as you lean left and right in the scene. Paintings and photographs can also give the sense of a subject looking back at you as you move, <laughs> but in a light field, your perspective uh, within the scene can change as well. Uh, uh, only horizontal. In this final light field, Sherry and Gonzalo gave their attention to Aww. each other rather than to the camera. Surrounded by the environment of their own creation. How long did you have to hold that for? We hope you've enjoyed this short tour with light fields, and we'll visit the gallery where you can see these and a few more light fields for as long as you'd like. Where would you like light fields to take you next? All right. Well, that's that's amazing. Uh, let's see if there's any we didn't see. What's this one? Oh, whoa! <laughs> oh, it reminds me of the uh, original Oculus demo where you could see yourself in the mirror and it would change masks and all that. Either that or like GLaDOS from Portal. Uh, this is so trippy. That, that totally makes sense, yeah, because as, as it's rotating, if it's in the reflections, and as you move your head, it's going to be changing light fields, and you see the different versions. The specularity on that chair is beautiful. Wow. And even, like, the fan there, like, just the kind of flat white effect we get, that's that's excellent. <laughs> wow. Huh. And those out there, those look kind of... They look distorted, but I, I have to imagine they're actually bent like that, because uh, nothing has really felt distorted so far. Mirror. Is that there? Uh, 
reflection on the whole thing. Lots of reflections. Great showcase of the technology. Yeah, like if you do a traditional scan or photogrammetry of an object, you really don't get a lot with reflections. So this is cool. Good little mid view. Hey, a new room. Huh. Now, this is interesting. I don't know how well this reads on the 2D screen, but this feels like a weird, blurry ghost. Uh, I think it's like a light or something floating above the table, but um, it doesn't look properly three-dimensional to me in VR. Pretty much everything else does. And I mean, there's a, some interesting effects. It looks like the sun moved while uh, the light field capture was happening because the light on the wall moves if I lean my head. Reflection of the TV looks good. That all looks great. Nice big reflective ball. My legs are tripods. Oh yeah, this is weird. So the shadows actually don't look like they're flat on the ground. In VR, they actually feel like they're floating like a couple inches off the ground. Huh. This is probably the coolest thing I've seen in VR in 2018 so far. Really a remarkable use of the technology and going a long way towards fighting uh, motion sickness too, you know? Being able to show captures like this where people don't have to keep their head perfectly still as they rotate around. Uh, it's a more comfortable experience and ultimately it feels more realistic. You get an even better sense of depth and scale. Though, to be honest, I'm realizing that, you know, I've been doing this for a whole 10 minutes and I'm, I'm already spoiled on it already. I'm like, I just want to walk a little bit further. Why does it keep blocking me out? How quickly we become accustomed to our privilege. Okay, so let's leave it at that. Um, this has been great. I'm, I'm so impressed. Thank you, Google, for all you do. It's amazing. This is free. And, you know, you gave us Tilt Brush. You gave us Google Street View, Google Earth VR. And, oh my god, when this stuff starts to combine with Google Earth, that's going to be an awesome trip. I can't wait. That's going to be great. All right, and I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I mean, I don't know how well this translated over into uh, a flat screen, but absolutely, if you can... Um, try this out in VR. It's, uh, it's really remarkable. And that's it. Have a great day.